moment there that threw me for a loop i had to think about that what my response would be <laughs> i'm still thinking <laughs> so, okay all right well you know it works for some people so are you italian living in canada ah uh, no but uh, <laughs> similar european descent very uh austrian germanic heritage <laughs> ah okay all right um we have uh, been working feverishly to make sure we get this episode uh, out more than perfect. So um, we wanted to get this uh, episode out just like the pilot, which had its numerous kinks in it, but we didn't care. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> we did not care. <laughs> we just wanted to do it. Uh, so, um, uh, boss, I'm just going to read a few things out to you. I'm looking at uh, uh, Claudia's here. Um, we got... Uh, JW here. I'm going to sneak in here a little bit more. Uh, JW27. Uh, I think I'm going to have to move my monitor closer. Um, we also got uh, living after divorce. Warren is here. And of course, leave underscore no underscore contact underscore go underscore ghost. One of our uh, faithful and loyal uh, followers to uh, the network here, uh, the Narc Abuse TV network. Right now, though, everyone, uh, Coach has been putting some things together for you. Uh, to put out uh, at least 12 to 15 episodes. This is episode one. Mm -hmm. So this is where I get to be quiet because here's the coach. Oh, my goodness. This is so exciting. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Um, I appreciate if you came back after the pilot with all of the technical issues we had. Uh, as you can see, I have a real microphone now, so I don't have to shout at everyone. <laughs> Hey, wait a minute. Hold on a second, Coach. Uh, no offense to uh, interrupt you there. I think you have something over there that, uh, well, if you push a button or two, you can show everybody. Well, I was just going to say I, uh, I was a little bit jealous of your abilities over there. So look what I can do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, All right. Wait. I don't have that one. Fine. That's pretty cool. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. This goes with my Nintendo tattoo. Here we go. Ready? <laughs> Okay, come on now. Okay, that outdid me. All right, I'm buying new equipment. Okay, my, my equipment people are fired. They're fired. <laughs> that is... No, play that again. Seriously, what is that? The dreaded you death... You have got to be kidding me. Brothers, yeah, just knows. <laughs> that is crazy. I love it. I love it. I love it. So All right, go ahead, boss. <laughs> Awesome. So first of all, I wanted to let everybody know I've created an email address specifically for the show. 
So if anybody has any topic ideas, any questions, um, if you want to be a part of the show, uh, when we start taking um, live questions and things like that, you can email us directly at thecoachjessshow at gmail.com. And uh, maybe Paxton, you can throw that in the description for the show when you put it back up later. Uh, yes. recorded, perfect. And then, of course, if you guys want to see some more behind the scenes things and find out what's going on for future episodes, um, you can follow the account at Coach Jess 2021. And then, of course, my uh, business Instagram account as well. So at Life Plus Coaching. So a lot of just uh, housekeeping there at the beginning to let you guys know how you can contact us and keep in touch. Um, I also have a Facebook community. You can get to that through my link in my bio on at Life Plus Coaching. Right. Uh, you have more that have joined you, by the way, Coach. Uh, Amazing. Uh, we've got the uh, Call Me uh, um, here as well. It says uh, Call Me Back, I believe that says. Um, you know what? I'm going to do something in real time here for this episode. Hold on one second, Coach. That monitor looks a lot better when it's up closer. Uh, uh, that's Call Me Bach. Um, uh, Yolanda's here as well. Uh, Shish No More. Um, you're getting a, a yay from JW37. And uh, a few others are here as well. So, Coach, uh, you at least on the episode one did not scare away everybody from the pilot uh, from our technical difficulties. So thank you, everyone, for being here. We really appreciate you sticking with us as we evolve with this. Um, so today, everyone, I wanted to talk about my favorite R, resiliency. Um, as I mentioned in the pilot show, there's six different R's we're going to go through um, throughout this season, bringing them back up when we have questions and things like that. But for the first few episodes, I'm going to try to get very specific with what these things are exactly so that you know what we're talking about um, from here on out, basically. So uh, resiliency is not a term that everyone has heard. It's not a term that's super common yet. I am working to change that uh, because resiliency is a very, very, very important aspect of mental wellness. Um, and obviously in that regard, we're speaking about mental and emotional resiliency. So um, obviously there are other types of resiliency, physical resiliency. Um, and to give you a picture of what this might look like, you can imagine um, kind of a, a, an elastic band, you know, snapping it and it, it coming back to its original form. So in essence, resiliency is the ability to bounce back, right? To go back to your prior state of, in a mental and emotional sense, stability. Um, so resiliency is important to uh, ensure that we do not basically get to a state of burnout, get to a state of exhaustion, get to a state of medical crisis. Um, resiliency is something that we can work on to prevent the process of us moving along the, you know, the, the steps of burnout and getting to the end where we actually are in crisis. And so resiliency is, uh, it, it's, it's a really important aspect, again, of mental and emotional wellness. And, and just like Jess is saying here, you know, you can't fail if you don't give up trying. And that is, that's a huge part of resiliency. It's not, um, it's not, not, not just not giving up, but also trying other ways, right? Because I think it was um, Albert Einstein who said the definition of, of crazy is doing the same thing and expecting different results. Um, you're getting, you getting, you getting, <laughs> you getting, uh, you getting deep on us uh, people who haven't passed high school. One of my favorite. So, I'm just joking with you, Jess. Um, it's it's a really good. I like what I like what Jess says on the screen, though. Yeah, absolutely, and that's again, that's a huge part of resiliency. Is it's getting back up, dusting yourself off, and trying again, but trying different things, right? And so that's the important aspect of resiliency. It's uh, it, it's just continuing to move towards your goal. You might need to adapt the process. You might need to adapt what that goal looks like, even but it's moving towards that, that goal continuously and getting back to that state of stability while you do it. So not letting things scare you away like our pilot show. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> right? uh, that, that's a good one. I like the way you stuck that in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we did have to put our, we actually, then we had to put into practice what you're, what you're telling us to keep in mind as a reminder, <laughs> resiliency. 
uh, that it, we had to go back, uh, as it were, uh, into the tool shed. Uh, we get back into our lab, and we uh, had to do a few things differently. And then we said, we're going to try it again, and then we'll go back and do it again. Good point. Good point, boss. Exactly. Thank you. Sorry, I'm going to move my glasses there. I noticed they're catching my lights again, but I might have to squint a little to see my notes. <laughs> no worries. Um, yeah, so, so again, resiliency is really that ability to bounce back, to get back to that state of stability, that state of calm that you were in before whatever stressful event or trigger impacted you to um, an increased level of stress or, or a difficulty or a new experience or a different situation which you, you've never had to navigate before. Um, and so uh, adding to my bank of quotes, because I do love a good quote, um, another, another great one is you don't learn from experience alone, you learn from reflecting on that experience. And so that is where our three R's come in, that reduce, reuse, recycle. And so in order to really grow your resilience and your resiliency, you want to look back on your experiences and you want to decide what actions, thought patterns, cycles, whatever it might be, what type of people you're around, what environment you're in, whatever it might be. You want to figure out what you want to reduce or eliminate, reuse or replicate, or recycle um, and basically, you know, eliminate the things that are, aren't good about a specific um, thing or focus or topic and, and, and reuse the ones that are. So again, those three ideas going into resiliency are really going to allow you to teach yourself, coach yourself, guide yourself into a state of resiliency, into a higher level of resiliency. Um, can, the, can these... Uh... Coach, if I don't mind, if you don't mind, I'm going to ask. So, can these uh, elements of reducing, recycling, and reusing come into play, even if a person has dealt with uh, some type of child childhood uh, trauma or even sexual abuse? They really can, and um, in in that regard, obviously, it's not the only tool you want to have that you're using. Um, but if you look at it at a bit of a higher level, um, if, if you're going to, you know, reduce basically the things that you are around that trigger you you're going to reuse the things that help you process heal and move forward in that trauma and you know that usually i would recommend that include a, a licensed therapist um, or someone who is well versed in trauma because that's a very specific uh, mental health issue that needs to be addressed properly um, and then again recycling so taking the things that you've tried before the things that you've experienced before taking the elements out that have been helpful for you and have helped you move forward and, and reducing the things that keep you held back or keep you triggered. Would we have to know then what the uh, things are that hold us back? Absolutely, absolutely. And so self-awareness is, is one of the main points of resiliency. Um, and, and funny enough, it's also a very large part of emotional intelligence, which I feel falls into resiliency quite a bit. Um, in, in the aspect of, of, like you said, knowing yourself, knowing what triggers you, knowing what helps you. And so keeping those, those journals or lists or track or, or whatever it might be, however you pay attention to yourself and reflect on your own experience, like I said earlier, however you do that, make sure it's consistent and make sure it's across enough period of time that you're getting enough data or information to make the decisions about what actually helps and what actually hinders or makes things worse. So it means more than just waking up in the morning, not really having an idea of what could trigger us. We need to not be hypervigilant, but eventually get to the point that we can recognize what we have to recycle, reuse, or eliminate altogether. Absolutely, absolutely. And it can be very difficult for some because those kinds of memories and experiences, um, you know, being a survivor of that myself, it's not something that you want to voluntarily bring up in your own head. It's not something that you want to wake up thinking about every day. It's not something you want to go to bed thinking about every day. But that is the work that has to be done for you to be able to navigate that properly, heal from that properly, and move forward from that properly 
And it doesn't have to be something that's on your mind 24 seven. In fact, something I often recommend is setting appointments with yourself throughout your day. So it's not something that's always in the back of your mind, but you have a scheduled time that you're going to think about it, write about it, reflect on it, whatever it is that you need to do at that point, you have it scheduled in your day. You know when it's going to get done. So when those thoughts come up, you're like, oh, I'm going to worry about that later. I don't need to keep thinking about that right this second while I'm trying to work or while I'm trying to be with my family or whatever that part might be. So the thoughts don't control the day we actually would be, well, putting into play resiliency because Absolutely. we would be resilient based upon what you said to not let it take over. Absolutely. Exactly. And that's really a, a very large part of dealing with traumatic experiences is not letting those um, intrusive thoughts, those intrusive um, emotions, like push you off course. Right. And of course, there's a period of time where that's going to happen. It's not something, especially the more traumatic experience. It's not something that you're going to be able to just, oh, no, no, I got this. No problem. There's always going to be a period of time where there's maybe some grief, some um, some some extreme emotions that you're working through. This is more so in everyday life afterwards. So after the fact, you know, once you you're you're more removed from that situation, this is how you can, you know, deal with. Um, intrusive thoughts that are coming up even after you've gone to therapy and dealt with the actual healing and processing and things like that. Um, because that's not necessarily going to stop that, right? And so we need to also, in addition to having healing, working with a therapist, we need to have an action plan, a way to move forward towards our goals and, and have that not just be avoiding something, not just be avoiding a thought or a trauma or an experience. It has to be moving towards something, not just away from something, right? Or else you're not ever going to build something. You're just going to be escaping things your whole life. Right, right. Yeah. And if that's the case, then we're just essentially running in circles because that thought's going to keep coming back around. Absolutely. Until we, we put it in a certain place. And in addition to that, the thing that got me out of this pattern is reminding myself that when these things are happening, I am still letting my abuser control me and my behavior because even though it's not the exact abuse that they had inflicted on me previously, my actions are a response to that abuse. I'm not doing what I want because I can't because I have to also avoid this thing while I'm doing or trying to do what I want. So in essence, they still have control over you when those things are happening, when you're avoiding things because of that fear or that pain or that discomfort. And this may not be an open discussion within someone's home or uh, in their life because they're constantly running away from it, but it I'm keeps thinking. chasing them because those thoughts are not eliminated. They never go away. There's something that has to be put in its own place, as I kind of said before, but now you're adding something to or just running away from it or putting it in its place. You're talking about being resilient to find a, a new way to live that gets the best out of life. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if, if we don't do that, who's going to do that for us? You know, a therapist can sit with you and can work through the complexities or the, you know, the, the difficulties of what happened to you. Right. But then when I finished therapy, I found I was happy with having processed those things, but I didn't know what to do next. I felt like I was given this whole new life, this whole new perspective but I didn't know what the next steps were to be, hmm. right? And so I want to make sure nobody feels that way, that they know that there is an action plan they can put in place. They know that they can use their own information, their own intellect, and their own experience to create an action plan that's going to, again, move you towards something, not just away from something. And you got something on the screen there, Coach, from Hi. Gypsy Mama 85 and if you could, please feel free or make up a name. Let us know a first name uh, if you'd like to do so. Control your thoughts before they control you. That is fantastic. Absolutely. And if you find yourself only dealing with intrusive thoughts, again, those are controlling you. You're not putting your foot down. This is my brain. This is my mind. I get to control what happens there. You know, thoughts are not truth. 
thoughts are not always reality. Sometimes they're biased by the experiences that you've had. Oh, Danielle, perfect. Thank you so much for letting us know. We're really happy that you're joining us today too. Oh, meditation and yoga, fantastic, fantastic elements for, again, reflecting on your experiences. Um, do you find that really helps you with stress levels? While she's replying here, I'm, uh, I'm going to keep talking about my resiliency here. Aw. Wow, it sounds like you've definitely been been through some some stuff there. Feel free again to just if you feel like sharing any more, feel free. Um, if you're not comfortable sharing more here, don't worry about that. You can always message me privately. We can have a discussion. But I'd certainly love to to know more about your experience and and what it is exactly that you're you're referring to here. She mentioned her yoga mat. Mm -hmm. That's amazing how that inanimate object can help somebody deal with emotions and trauma that happened in the past. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's in this sense, it's a bit more symbolic. It's like that is a symbol of her decision. Like she's saying here on the screen, she, she decided to start showing up for herself. You know, not necessarily knowing why, but showing up anyways. And that is... That's a huge part of it. A lot of people and a lot of companies and businesses even, they tout um, this self-care message, this, you know, um, take care of yourself, buy yourself expensive things, you know, come shop at our businesses and, and, and self-care is, is luxury and, and spoiling yourself and spa days. That's not what self-care is. The epitome of self-care is self-responsibility, taking care of your feelings, your emotions, the things that you need to be stable, to move forward, to achieve your goals, to help those you want to help along the way. That is your responsibility. That is self-care. That is the kind of self-care that will allow us to show up for others when they need us because we're taking responsibility for ourselves. We're not going around dumping things on other people, blaming other people for our issues, all of that kind of stuff, right? When we do that self-care, when we take that responsibility like Danielle here has and started showing up for herself, she made that decision to be responsible for her own emotions, her own feelings, and finding a way to regulate those things. Exactly, Danielle, exactly. And it, it sounds to me like you obviously made the best decision that you had to make for your future, your children, and for moving forward. And now you've found an amazing way to maintain your mental wellness while you're dealing with the difficulties of, you know, having left, you know, the father of, of your children. That's a difficult thing to do. But seeing the goal of a healthy family dynamic, you know, that that's huge. That's incredible. I hope you are incredibly proud of yourself. And I hope you celebrate yourself for the decision that you made for your family. Hey, bo hey, boss, coach, I think you may have a button over there you could use for that at some point. Oh, right. Which one? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Is it? Awesome. Well done, Danielle. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, Danielle, you're making a point there. It's a long line of women that would agree with you on that. Yeah, definitely. Oh, we got a, a question here from my uh, my other Jess. <laughs> Jwa thirty seven here. So she wants to know what a good way to stop negative internal heckler is. So I'm going to give you a really really fun project. You are going to visualize this internal heckler. You are going to put a face to it. You're going to put an attitude to it. You're going to name it. Okay. And now if you can draw it. If you can't draw it, find a picture online anywhere that might represent what this internal heckler like looks like to you based on their attitude and how they we want to create an external representation of what that internal negative heckler looks like, right? So that we can basically put them in their place. All right. Now, once you've done that, Jess, 
DM me and we're going to talk about the next steps for what you can do to actually get this out of your head completely, right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to basically turn it from a struggle into a chance to be genuine and honest with yourself and a good chance for a fantastic laugh. So um, start with the drawing. If you want to share it with us, you can always do that on the at Coach Just 2021 page, which would be amazing. Um, I'd love to see that. And I'm sure everyone else would too here. But if you don't want to, again, feel free to DM me. We'll chat about it a little bit in private and I'll give you the next few steps for that. Coach, uh, boss, yeah. I I'm kind of curious to see what it is too. With, with no pressure, <laughs> no pressure to the other Jess there, uh, not to get into your business. Would you say she, on the screen, she says, I rock some, <laughs> some cave rock art. Some cave <laughs> so, okay. Cave art is cool. I want to see yeah. it. Uh, your cave art, especially if it comes with a rainbow Afro. So if it comes with a rainbow Afro, I might really be into, it, be into that. So uh, I just, I just want to say, uh, coach, uh, we have uh, others that have joined us. We appreciate everyone in their comments. It's an open uh, form for you to be able to express yourself with the coach here uh, on her show. Uh, feel free to DM her or talk to her privately if you need to do so. Um, uh, we got Trace uh, Face It that is here. Uh, I've seen a number of her videos uh, on in on uh, rather should say on YouTube. Anybody uh, feel free to take a look at her work as well. Uh, Danielle, thank you so much uh, for what you've mentioned. Uh, but uh, Coach, she got something else there on the screen as well about cave art. Yeah, well, she mentioned, too, as well, uh, that she does some poetry on her page, which I'm going to have to go and check out after the show. Um, yeah, cave art is rad. All art is rad. Um, it does make the world a better place. And it reminds me of something else I heard. Uh, you don't have to be good at something to do it. You know, right, hobbies right, are right. supposed to be fun. They don't have to be, you know, you don't have to be able to make money off of something in order to put your time to it. This is this obsession we have with this productivity being dollar signs. I'm looking forward to some cave art. Feel free to do <laughs> to donate some of your cave art or post it or send it to us uh, at uh, the coach's uh, Instagram page. Definitely, definitely. And that is at Life Plus Coaching. Again, if you uh, forget, but I'll, I'll make sure Paxton has that in the description here as well. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, moving forward with uh, with the resiliency here actually wanted to just bring up kind of a brief example to walk you through the steps of what it might look like to go through the three R's with resiliency here. Please keep adding your comments and messaging here. Danielle, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, so actually, there's some art that I do that I haven't ever really mentioned on my page, but we'll get to that in a minute. Really now? <laughs> That's for you later. Hold out, you hold not on me, boss. What's up with that? <laughs> future episodes trust me <laughs> gotta bring them back all right so an example uh that i wanted to bring up just because of our experience paxton together um you are a former narcissistic abuse coach and i have mm -hmm. recently been a lot about dealing with boss stress and bosses who stress people out so i wanted to bring up an example where you have a boss who's a narcissist and you know how me what we might yep. go through the three steps the reduce reuse recycle in order I got a button be... for that, boss. Oh, yeah? Let's hear it. If you got a narc boss, if you have a narc boss, ever had a narc boss, <laughs> <laughs> just call Perfect. on the crows. They'll take care of them. I love it. All right. That's the best I can do. That was the worst moment in episode one right there. <laughs> no, All right. Show back to you, boss. All right. Uh, so I am trying to now see if I have a... a noise to outdo that but i don't think i do <laughs> <laughs> so we'll get back to the discussion first of all <laughs> first of all i give up way ahead of time if we get into a battle and so just in case some of you that are watching don't know this is an international connection she is actually in canada i'm here on the west coast in california and near the, the beach where i get all my my chocolate tanning in so so, so <laughs> We are we are nowhere near each other, but I couldn't come close to some of the sounds you seem to have over there. So I I, I immediately uh, submit to your power of sound over there. So even though I'm the man in the booth for you and for your show, so I I just keep my mouth shut. <laughs> so. No, that's okay. We need all the buttons. They can all play together. Wait, what, what, what is Jess saying over there? What you got on the screen there? What is that? Canadians, we walk oh, amongst 
Jeff right. often in California, so. Oh, okay. Now I'm scared. <laughs> yeah, you should be. <laughs> the power of Coach Jess Reach has just connected with another Jess. I am in trouble. I am literally in trouble. I need some resiliency at this point. <laughs> All right. Let's go through the steps, Paxton. So, All right. Jess is a boss, but she is the furthest thing from a narcissistic boss. But we're going to switch our gears here to talking about a narc, a narc boss, right? So let's say you have a boss who, you know, never admits their mistakes. They are, you know, borderline emotionally, verbally uh, harassing or bullying, not to the point that they're removed from their position, but kind of like just under that where, you know, they're, they're chirpy. Um, they, you know, they, they don't want to be there to support you when you have questions yet they turn around and blame you for not having the tasks finished that you needed to talk with them about. Um, just a really bad situation where, you know, this person takes credit for any, any of your ideas. Um, you know, just, just the typical narcissist, right? Where everything is about them. Any businessman ever, Danielle. <laughs> 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 Wait a minute. Come on now. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> I still like you, Danielle. I still like you, Danielle. Um, so, yeah, basically, this is a narcissistic boss. This is the epitome of a narcissistic boss. So what we want to do is first we want to figure out the things that make our stress with this person worse, that make the situation worse, that made it make it harder to communicate, that make it harder to move forward with them. So number one here, um, speaking with them face to face might be one of the most stressful things that you have to deal with just because of their attitude the way they talk down to you um and and it's it's it they just can't seem to actually give you the focus and attention that you need when you're trying to talk to them so that's one thing that we want to you know kind of reduce if we can is having to speak to this person face to face next thing could be problem solving with them um you find it's a huge source of stress because they don't actually offer any suggestions and they just kind of mock yours so um, they really are only on your side for this when you've come up with an incredible idea and they want to take credit for it. So uh, let's say that's number two is, is having to problem solve with this person back and forth. Uh, and then the third one is just trying to be friendly with them on a day to day basis. Ask how their weekend was, things like that. Anytime you try to do that and, you know, further the relationship a little bit, they get snappy with you, tell you that you should be working, you shouldn't be talking to them. Um, any of that stuff, right? And uh, so Jess here is adding her boss advice, but I'm not going to read it just yet. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, boss. Yeah. So so those are the things that we want to reduce. So we want to cut those out because those are the, the three things that create the most stress for you in your workplace, right? Um, so and, and this is something that we've come to by observing our own behavior over a period of time. So let's say a week to a month. And, and figuring out the things that elicit the biggest stress response in us, making a list of those things. So these are the top three things that would be on my list, right? Um, so the next thing we want to figure out are the things that we do that are working for us, that we want to reuse, replicate, um, that minimize the stress and the struggle that we have with this person. So as Jess mentioned, communicate with your boss through email. It's going to allow you to finish your thoughts. It's going to allow you to have proof if they told you that, you know, you didn't tell them something, you didn't ask them something. Um, it's, it's going to make them think twice before being rude to you or saying things rudely to you because it's going to be there in a written documentation, just like Jess said, right? You're going to have that um, in, in a copy at your, at your hands if you need to, at your fingertips to prove something if that comes up, you know, if you need to escalate a situation further in the future. Um, for the second one, you know, you've noticed that instead of approaching problem solving with them like a conversation where they can basically, uh, you're allowing them to have input on every single piece of your ideas. Again, you can go and you can um, begin this, this problem solving issue instead of a face-to-face -face situation where they can just immediately cut you down, break down your ideas, not listen to you. Um, you can you can go and send them an email where you basically state your solution and when you're going to implement it by if you don't hear back from them. This now is you're, you're telling them what you're going to do. So that gives you an opportunity or that sorry, that gives them an opportunity to tell you if you're going to do it wrong, if there's an issue with that. 
before you implement the solution. So you have a deadline you're giving them as well, right? So now it's not a back and forth thing. It's more like, okay, well, actually, um, we can't do it that way for this reason, right? And, and, and then this is much more of a constructive problem solving instead of a back and forth of someone looking at you like you're dumb or looking at like, like you don't know what you're talking about or talking over you because they think that because they have more experience, they, they know better, right? This kind of eliminates that, right? And so we're going to reuse this situation. Um, sorry, we're going to reuse this process where we instead, we, we go to them with an idea and the solution and when it's going to be implemented. And that still gives them an, an, an opportunity to respond before you do it. But it also shows the seriousness of the problem solving and when it needs to be done by. So it kind of gives them that deadline. And then number three, um, if you want to kind of have that friendly conversation, you notice that your boss is a narcissist. Again, what do narcissists like to talk about? It's themselves. So if you want to try to have a friendly conversation with your boss, start talking about the things you think they've done great. Start talking about the things that you love about them, the things that they do in the office and the workplace that, you know, you really love the problems that they've solved in the past that were fantastic, right? This gives you an in because A, you're talking about work, so they can't tell you that you're wasting time because you're talking about work. B, you're, you're kind of stroking their ego a little bit. You're, you're talking to them about their favorite topic, right? No one's going to turn that away. Everyone loves compliments. Everyone loves hearing when they've done something well. And so this is also going to create more of a positive association for you in that person's minds. Right. It's going to show them that you're paying attention to the things that they do well. So when you do have an issue come up or arise, it's not going to be something in your head like, oh, this person only ever talks to me when they want to complain. Right. So um, it, it really is important to pay attention and to find the things that work as much as the things that don't work. Getting some love on the screen there, uh, Coach. Boss, you got some love on the screen there from Danielle. She oh, says, sorry, my kids, are, my kids are fighting. It's been lovely. Catch y'all later. Thank you, Danielle. You're already gone when you watch this back. We appreciate you being here. Yeah, and come back and watch the rest. And hello, Tiffany and Fabi. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We really appreciate all the company today. Um, Mindfulness. So Megan is also here as well, oh. Coach. And welcome, welcome. And hello. Rach Jarvis is also here. Beautiful, beautiful. Welcome to the Coach Jess fam. <laughs> so we're Team just going healthy. To yeah. Team healthy. Team healthy. Team healthy. That's actually not mine. I got that from somebody else, but uh, we'll get into that another time. I like it. Uh, we got a, uh, hey guys, from Tiffany. Thank you, Tiffany, for being here. And thank you for the heart. This is the first episode of the Coach Jess show. And again, I'm going to take a moment, Coach, to remind everybody uh, the Coach Jess show will be a Saturday, at this point, Saturday-only show uh, at least uh, twice a month at this moment in time because the coach, of course, has a number of clients that she has to spend time with. She's been kind enough to bring her brand and her show uh, here to the Narc Abuse TV network. Uh, this network is, uh, in itself, has a number of uh, different guests that come on, a number of different shows that we do, uh, but that has been set aside because we want to uh, showcase uh, this wonderful coach and her ability to be a, of assistance to a number of people, not just uh, women, but also men. Uh, and her main method of working with individuals deal with uh, relationships, resiliency, as well as recovery. But they're all based upon the principle of three fundamental ways to approach those. And coach, feel free to let them know about the other three R's. The other three R's, are we talking about um, relationship recovery and resiliency? Uh, those connected to reduce, re recycle, and reuse. So many R's, Paxton. I know. I'm thinking <laughs> about getting you a shirt and shipping it over there to, uh, to Canada with a big R on it that Perfect. you can wear. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Pirate. R. You get in love on the screen there, Coach. Uh, I've been so excited to meet you, Coach Jess, Tiffany says. Uh, Coach, I told you about paying people to come on the show and say nice <laughs> things about you. Uh, the other Jess, the other Canadian Jess, 
uh, would you say she's here in California? Um, no. Hooray for mental health for humans. Now that's what we were shooting for. We love those kind of comments without a doubt. Both of those, we appreciate it. You have uh, uh, Sid Donahue that also joined as well as uh, I'm looking at that. That looks like uh, I really am going to have to move this uh, monitor close. I'm glad we're getting these kinks out in the first episode in the pilot. It might be <laughs> the episode. German name because the D is uh, usually German for the. Okay. <laughs> So we've got uh, a number of, uh, that have passed through or are still with us. Coach, I have to ask you about this. When it comes to resiliency, how can someone show resiliency after they've been dealing with a narcissistic abuse relationship? Resiliency um, after a narcissistic abuse relationship, it, it can be very complicated and complex. It, it really depends on the elements of that relationship, the types of abuse. Um, first and foremost, again, any, any kind of traumatic experience, which a, a narcissistic abusive relationship is, um, that requires, you know, the treatment of a, of a, of a therapist, right? Of a, a person who is well-versed in, in trauma and healing and, and is able to help you through that processing. But the action resiliency part, which comes afterwards, when you are looking to start new relationships, when you are looking to get yourself back out there, when that initial part has been, you know, healed and processed and gone through and you are now ready to start the next chapter of your life and move forward with action, um, we can, again, use that reduce, reuse, recycle, the three R's, right? So we can, we can look back at the reasons we entered that relationship or stayed in that relationship. We can look at the reasons we were attracted to this type of person, whether uh, there were red flags, whether they lied to us, whatever it might be, looking at all of the things, all of the, uh, the, the ideas, the reasons that you entered into this relationship and, and allowed it to continue. Look at those reasons, right? Those are the areas that we want to reduce. Those are the things that we want to stop. So whether that's, based on previous experiences, even to that narcissistic abuse relationship, whether that's things that happened in, in childhood, all of those things need to be considered, right? And we need to deal with each, each of those things separately. But for a general action plan, this is how we need to start looking at it. We need to discover what we want to reduce. And so again, those are the things that led us to get into this relationship in the first place. Um, we want to reuse the things that have helped us. What led us away from that relationship? What allowed us to get out of that relationship? What did we do to keep ourselves calm and safe during that relationship? What, what actions did we take, again, to be, to get out, right? Well, how can we do more of that, more of living for ourselves and making healthy decisions for ourselves? Mm -hmm. What are we doing that, that we can replicate and reuse moving forward? in future relationships? What allowed us to discover that we were in a narcissistic abuse relationship, right? Those are the things we want to have top of mind as we move forward in our lives, as we enter new relationships, as we continue on, and as we decide who we want to allow in our lives and who we want to allow to continue in our lives. Um, and then those two things, we want to decide when and how and if we're going to recycle them. So we're going to eliminate those ones that we want to reduce the reuse, we want to decide which situations and which relationships we're going to use those in. So the, it, it's, this is a very general kind of you know, equation for using resiliency to move past narcissistic abuse relationships, right? And not allowing them to control the decisions we make moving forward. Again, having a goal, having something you're moving towards, like a healthy relationship, a safe relationship. Um, you know, we want to be moving towards something and not just a way from the trauma, away from the narcissistic abuse, away from that, right? That's part of it, but it's not the only thing. Why is it important for, for us as individuals to not just be moving away from something, but to solidify resiliency? Because if we're always just moving away from something, we only know what to not do. We only know what to avoid right? We don't think about the things that we should be doing, right? So instead of um, having momentum and moving forward, we're just protecting ourselves. It's like a turtle, right? When they're scared, 
They're in their shell. They can't move. They can't do anything. They can't see. They're just reacting to fear and, you know, a predator. When they're calm and they feel safe, they come out. They eat. They're happy. They're moving along. They're moving towards whatever it might be. As slow as they might need to move, they're moving. They're doing something. So we need to get out of our shell, you know, to, to move towards something, to find something that um, motivates us, right? To find something that we can kind of hold on to as, as that goal in the distance, something that we can visualize ourselves having that makes the hard days easier because we know in those hard days, the difficulties that we're dealing with and experiencing, we're dealing with those things to get to this goal, not for no reason, not to just avoid pain, but to get to this goal of happiness and safety and health. If there's a fog and a person can't emotionally feel that they can attain a goal, then what are some steps they need to keep in mind so they can reach resiliency or use resiliency to start moving toward things instead of just running away and spending their life running away from narcissistic people? Set super, super tiny goals. Um, one of my previous therapists, he said to me, you know, people always say shoot for the stars even if you, no, sorry, shoot for the moon even if you fail, you'll land in the stars. But his quote is much better. It's, you know, uh, aim low and move forward. Keep going. Don't, don't stop moving because you think your goal should be up here and you can't reach it. Just move your goal a little bit lower and lower and lower. Break your goal down to the utmost basic parts, right? If you haven't left your bed in 10 days, make, make your goal getting out of bed. And if that seems impossible, make your goal putting your feet on the floor right? Something, just something that is tiny and small, but still allows you to celebrate yourself, celebrate an accomplishment, show yourself that you can achieve things, even when you're dealing with all of the burdens of the stress and the trauma that you're experiencing. Just something, something tiny and make sure to celebrate yourself. Don't shrug it off or pass it off as something small and insignificant. It's not. If you haven't been able to get out of bed in days and you can put your feet on the floor now, that is a step forward. That's huge. And if you don't celebrate yourself for that, then you're letting yourself down. You really need to be your own cheerleader sometimes. You've got some uh, information on the screen from our, our beautiful, loyal friend to the show and to the network, Ann underscore Crosby underscore. She says, mm -hmm. you do have some bad days but I have to push myself emotionally and stay positive. She also mentions do something you enjoy. That's similar yeah. to what you're talking about, Coach. Absolutely. Very, very much so. And, and if that thing that you enjoy, you know, even seems far away as well, you can be begin by having those small steps to move forward and towards that. For instance, if you enjoy being around people and you're suffering with social anxiety, start with, you know, making a five-minute phone call or sending a text message, or something that you're able to do that isn't as scary, but is a step in that direction towards the thing that's a bit scary for you, right? And so, you know, pushing yourself emotionally and staying positive, those are good things to do if they are allowing you to do more. If, on the other hand, there is such thing as toxic positivity, right? And so making sure that you're not being positive to your own detriment, whereas you're allowing yourself to engage in unhealthy coping mechanisms um, or doing things that make you feel better but are you know are bad for your future we don't want you getting stuck in those cycles and just saying oh it'll all work itself out right that's kind of like a toxic positivity sense we want to make sure we're staying in reality we're being realistic with our small goals and those are things that we can realistically achieve in the time frame that we set for ourselves we're not trying to get to the moon here we're just trying to make sure we're living healthy, healthy lives. Yeah, know what Tiffany makes, some... know what makes, you... yeah, or know that making you, yeah, so making yourself happy is, is really healing yourself. It really is. It's, it's, it's almost that inner child work where you're reminding yourself that you matter, that your happiness matters, that your safety matters, your health matters. You are an individual, unique human being and you matter in absolutely every sense. And if something hurts you 
or is painful to you, you do not have to have that in your life. And you get to make that decision. Nobody else. And going through your experiences and deciding what to reuse, what to reduce, how you're going to recycle these things, that is how you get to decide. Right? Do the things that give you strength. Keep doing those over and over and over and over again. Build on those. Learn more. Add to that list. Right? If you notice something brings you down or, or upsets you or triggers your stress, stop doing it. Stop it. Don't make excuses for it. Stop engaging in it. If it's a person, if it's a toxic person in your life, stop being around them. It doesn't have to be forever. It can be a period of time where you just need to do that to gain some clarity to decide what you want to do moving forward. Gaining clarity can make a difference. What if a person has never had clarity? Could they be scared by that opportunity to finally have clarity because they're accustomed to the abuse? Absolutely, absolutely. When I was healing from my complex post-traumatic stress disorder, um, because fear and protecting myself were the only things on my mind for so long, the idea of having mental space to, for instance, have a hobby or actually enjoy the schoolwork that I was doing or socialize, it was terrifying for me. It was so terrifying to think of the fact that I now had to make decisions instead of just react to things that happened to me. It's, it's almost like institutionalization when you've been in prison and you're now out of prison and your choices have been made for you for so long, you, you don't know how to decide things anymore. It, it creates this difficulty in your mind because it's scary now to make a choice because you don't trust your choices because you haven't had to in so long. You've just been reacting. You've done what you had to do for so long. You, you hadn't had a choice. Tiffany agrees with you. She says, yes, I find comfort and clarity. Absolutely, absolutely. Like being able to see things for what they are and instead of just to avoid fear and pain and abuse, it's a, it's a completely different life. It's a completely different outlook. He also highlights, absolutely true, I still can't make normal daily decisions. Absolutely. It's, it, can, it can feel really impossible. And this is where paying attention to yourself comes, you know, comes first to mind. It's keeping track of yourself, keeping track of what works and what doesn't work. Just like Jess is saying, see, we have one mind, basically. <laughs> wow. Right? That's why failure when. is fantastic because failure is action. You're taking action. Even if that doesn't work out, you now know that doesn't work. You know that's not an option. So now you have all of the other ways that you've outlined to go. Right? So it, it, it's moving you forward. Failure is great. And it's weird to celebrate failure. But if the other option is stagnancy and not moving forward, and just staying exactly where you are, never any better, then, then, then what's the point? Your, your life, you're basically sitting still. Right? That's why what she wrote is very important. That's why failure can be great, is what uh, Jess writes, JWA37. Not sure what to do. Try an option. And if it's not working, doing the next one is what uh, Jess contributes to the show in the chat. Absolutely. Absolutely. We have, and this is a woman. I believe that's run. Gannon 3 that has joined. Uh, please, uh, if you like to, I'll mention this now. I said it at the beginning of the show. Uh, Coach Jess will be happy to call you by a first name, even if you make up one, uh, because sometimes <laughs> the Instagram, Instagram names can be quite challenging as we go through the chat. So feel free to put a name yeah. in for us, please. Yes, Tiffany, more, more chances if you need them. Again, it, the number of chances that you give yourself should be equal to the number of different ideas you have for how to get it done, right? Never stop trying. If that goal is important to you, you're going to find a way to get it done. That's how successful people are successful. They, they did not give up, right? Aside from all the other things that go into, you know, helping friends out and networking and all that kind of stuff. If you 
really want something, you're not going to let anything stop you. And it, 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 the power of your own motivation, your own determination, that in and of itself is enough to drive you, right? It, you really need to be your own cheerleader. And that's why celebrating your small victories is huge. When you're doing this, you're creating this cycle in your brain where you're telling your brain, okay, if you do this work and we do it together, and even though it's difficult, we get it done, I'm going to reward you with something, right? So you give your brain that serotonin or that dopamine or whatever it, it might mean um, that, that you need in that moment. You're going to give yourself that after the work is done. You're creating this cycle where you're now your brain is associating work with reward, right? That increases your motivation subconsciously. You're going to be more inclined to get things done if you know there's a reward at the end of it. That's just how your brain works, right? And we, like we know that for a fact. When it comes to uh, Jess, JW37, she says, I failed heaps. It's a numbers game. And Both. <laughs> one of our, again, loyal followers to the network as well as to your show, Coach, says, never give up. It's a tough stay strong. Absolutely. Tiffany not. mentions exactly right. You've got yep. more and more that are pouring in, Coach. You Our show are... is near its end. Thank you all so much for joining us. This is so exciting. Hey, can I push another button? <laughs> you're just showing off at this point, Coach. <laughs> okay, so come on, boss. You're showing, you're showing off. Go, yeah, go ahead. Do whatever you like, boss. It's your show. All right, that was a good one. I'm going to play it again, though. I love it. You guys are so great. <laughs> okay. I I really like that one, coach. It's a I good like one. that one. I do. I like that one. I don't know whether we should play it at the end of every show or what. What what other <laughs> buttons you got? Wait, I want to hear it again. Wait, push, push that button again. Okay. I love it. You guys are so great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I like that one. That's my that's us being our own cheerleaders. Is that what that is? That's our <laughs> resiliency boss. Is that Thanks. what it is? Okay, that's the resiliency button. <laughs> okay, uh, Tiffany says, uh, please push some buttons. By the <laughs> way, she's got a whole bunch of them over there. Her equipment is definitely outshining mine over here in, in California. Again, she's in Canada, everybody. This is an international show. Uh, we are just happy that the internet works and doesn't cut us off in between <laughs> like we did on the pilot show. I can't believe it's push working so much. I know. We just uh, so go ahead, push some more. Let uh, let everybody else hear some of the other stuff you got there before we have to go. And thank you so much, Anne. If you're leaving now, thank you for joining us. I'll play you out. <laughs> okay, that's cool. Okay, so <laughs> Anne, be safe. Like Tiffany says, Tiffany's telling you to be safe. We agree <laughs> with her. Okay, what, I'm just curious. Just just one more. What else you got over there? Okay, that's cool. All right, we're, we're going to have to go back into our lab and we're going to have to figure some things out because as you can tell, this is free TV. Uh, this is not Disney. This is not NBC or anything like that. This is just a podcast network with the Coach Jess show, uh, which has landed here and has uh, began uh, its debut. First episode today. Thank you, Tiffany, so much. Uh, we love you back. Uh, we appreciate everyone that has contributed to the show. And yes, we have uh, kept notes and take names. Coach, please let them know how they can get a hold of you in private as well as your Instagram pages. Yes, sir. Please email me at thecoachjessshow at gmail.com. I want to hear from all of you and let me know uh, if there's anything you want to hear about on future shows or uh, any questions you might have that you'd like me to talk about. You can also follow our other Instagram page for the show specifically at Coach Jess 2021. And my, uh, my personal business e, uh, Instagram is at Life Plus Coaching. And um, my Facebook community is Better Than Okay, and it is a mental wellness community. If there are any subjects, as the coach has said, as my boss has mentioned, feel free to reach out <laughs> to her. Uh, the email address we will be posting, right, uh, boss, coach? Yes, sir. Uh, okay, so we will be uh, we will be making that available to everybody. 
Uh, we are putting a number of different things together. This is an open forum for you to come and chat and uh, speak uh, with the coach. Uh, I will continue to be as long as she wants me to. I will be her man in the booth for her and making sure a number of other different things are happening that no one will pay attention to. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, it's, it's my pleasure to be here with you, Coach, on this first episode. Uh, the pilot was a lot of fun. Uh, I learned a lot from you. I have tons of notes here. Uh, yeah. And uh, everyone, it is an honor uh, to have you with us here on the Narc Abuse TV Network uh, here for this first episode of uh, the Coach Jess Show. Uh, here on our podcast network. Uh, I just want to say this, by all means, everyone here, feel free to uh, hashtag tell a friend. Uh, make sure to tell a friend about the show. Uh, we are in the process of getting better as we go, but uh, I'm going to go back to what uh, you talked to us about in the in the, many of the audience, that failure is good. So there are some things that we're going to tweak. Uh, we feel that uh, we've enjoyed ourselves today without a doubt, right, Coach? Oh my goodness, so much. And I'm so happy to see so many of you joining us. This is so wonderful. Better than I could have imagined. <laughs> we, uh, we also need to mention, I don't know if we've done it yet or not, as we get the kinks out. Did we mention the Facebook group as well? I, I just did, yes. But okay. Time maybe I mentioned. I do have a Facebook community where you can have access to me. I post um, exclusive trainings, daily posts there, just about things that you can do to better your mental wellness. And uh, it's geared toward happiness and success. So we all want that, don't we? <laughs> it has been more than a pleasure. It has been fun. Uh, we have got episode one under our belt, as it were, and it is going to be uploaded. Please, by all means, feel free to come back. We want this to be an open forum and discussion between you and Coach Jess on uh, resiliency, relationships, and recovery. Thank you so much. Coach, take us out. Thank you all so much. I'm going to play this again. I love it. You guys are so great. It has just been absolutely wonderful. Thank you all for your comments and your feedback and your amazing points um, on point with what we were talking about today. I cannot wait to be back in another couple weeks with you guys. See you soon, everybody. Bye for now.